Production of Caesar Guided Tour is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to the seventh episode of the Caesar Guided Tour. The Caesar Guided Tour is a series of videos where I build Caesar, an iTunes inspired music player for Apple platforms feature by feature. In this episode, I'll be adding repeat and shuffle playback modes to Caesar. Let's get started. Repeat is the most straightforward of the two playback options. Specifically, I'm adding three menu items to the playback menu here. Repeat off, which just continues ordered playback until the end of the collection is hit, as it's been until now. Repeat all, which loops the collection when it arrives to its end. And repeat one, which loops the currently playing track over and over. Since we've got three distinct states to worry about here, let's use an enum to represent our repeat modes, which I'm adding here at the start of the collection queue class. We're also going to want to declare a property called repeat mode here on the collection queue class that will hold the active repeat mode. We need to modify the previous and next track methods to do the right thing in each repeat mode. If the repeat mode is repeat one, then obviously we want to return the currently playing track as both previous track and next track will be looping the same item over and over again. Otherwise, if the previous or next track is within the bounds of our currently playing collection, we want to continue using that track. Otherwise, if the previous or next track is out of bounds and our repeat mode is repeat all, we can imply that we've reached the head or tail of our collection and we need to wrap around to the other end. This means returning the last track of the collection if we're in the previous track method or the first track of the collection if we're in the next track method. Over in Interface Builder, I added a separator and three new items to the playback menu. Repeat off, which is checked by default, repeat all, and repeat one. Back in the app delegate class, I set off to write a method called repeat menu item selected that would be called by all three of these menu items whenever one was selected. At first, I thought I could just compare their menu item identifiers, but pretty early on, I realized that instead I could declare some IB outlets to all three menu items and compare the sender to those menu items to avoid putting magic strings into my code. Well, joke's on me. It seems like the kind of thing that would be really easy on paper, but the Swift type system and compiler really like to yell at you if you don't do it in precisely the right way, and it took way more time than it should have to do it correctly. So let's skip ahead to a screenshot of what I ended up with after about 20 minutes of messing around. The first guard let statement here starts by checking for the presence of a sender. This parameter is automatically filled out with the user's selected menu item when called from an IB action that was configured in Interface Builder. Then the second guard let statement ensures that this sender is an NS menu item instance before carrying on. This next block of code uses ternary operators. You might not be familiar with them, but they're a way of keeping code length down when using conditionals. Let's break down this first line. The left hand side of the equal sign is repeat off item question mark dot state which means we are assigning a value to repeat off item dot state as long as repeat off item is not nil. The right hand side of the equal sign is a ternary operator, which has three parts. The leftmost part preceding the question mark is a conditional statement. The middle part preceding the colon is the value returned if that conditional statement equals true. The rightmost part following the colon is the value returned if that conditional statement equals false. So we'd read this ternary operator as if menu item is equal to repeat off item, set the state of repeat off item to dot on, otherwise set it to dot off. Then we just repeat this for all three menu items. We don't just want the menu state to be changed by the selection of a menu item. If a collection queue player exists, we also want to set its collection queue repeat mode property to the corresponding mode. So that's what the last chunk of the code does. So let's go back to Interface Builder and tie these menu items to the IB action now that it's complete. And let's go test it. It doesn't seem to work at all. Pretty quickly I remembered that I forgot to bind the menu items to their IB outlets, so let's do that real quick. And let's test again. And it seems to work great. I'm going to speed through a bunch of code here because a lot of it gets thrown away. 
Right now, changing a repeat mode in the menu only works when a collection queue player is already initialized. If a player isn't initialized yet, the selected repeat mode doesn't carry over to a newly initialized player at all. So my first way to deal with this was simply to disable the menu items until a player is initialized. But then I ran into another issue. Once a player is initialized, if you change the repeat mode and initiate playback from a different track in the same collection or from an other collection altogether, the selected repeat mode didn't carry over there either. So I wrote some code that would carry it over from the previous player. That worked, but it was really complex. And that's when the much simpler solution finally hit me, and that's what we'll be focusing on. First, let's re-enable our menu items in Interface Builder. If I make a method called currently selected repeat mode on the app delegate class that looks at our three menu items and verifies to see which it's currently checked, then we can return the correct enum value for these and we can use that as the primary source of the repeat mode when initializing our collection queue players. Shuffle is a trickier playback option to implement. In itself, the most rudimentary shuffle is pretty simple to implement. Just randomize whatever track comes up when you press the previous or next buttons, right? Well, sadly, most people have more complicated expectations than that. If you shuffle a collection, people expect that each track in that collection will be played exactly once before looping if you're in a repeat mode. Similarly, if a user presses the previous track button while shuffle is enabled, they expect to be returned to the last track they heard, not another randomly computed track. That means holding on to at least some state about what songs have been shuffled through and using that state information to do the right thing people expect in every scenario. Much like how we added a property to the collection queue for the repeat mode, we're going to add a shuffle enabled property which will hold a boolean value. We're also going to have a second property, previous shuffle track IDs, which will hold an array of previous track IDs played during the shuffle session. By default, it'll be empty. Then we'll head over to Interface Builder and add two menu items to the playback menu. Play in order, which is the default, and shuffle. We're going to add a method to the app delegate, which will be called when either of these menu items is selected. Shuffle menu item selected which behaves very similarly to repeat menu item selected. We're going to need some IB outlets in the app delegate, which will contain references to the two menu items related to shuffling. Back in the shuffle menu item selected method, we're going to use those two menu item outlets to check which item was selected and set the current checked status on both of them. Then if a collection queue player exists, we'll update the shuffle enabled property on the player's collection queue. For scenarios where no collection queue player exists yet, like if the shuffle status is changed before any audio is played through the app, we need two things. First, an isShuffle enabled method that looks at the state of the menu items and returns the corresponding Boolean value. Then we need to update the playback initiated method on the app delegate and pass the return value of is shuffle enabled along to the shuffle enabled property on the freshly initialized collection queue instance. We've got the menu state all out of the way, so let's write a basic shuffle implementation. First, in the previous track method of the collection queue class, let's start with a conditional that checks for whether shuffle is enabled. To go to the previous track in a shuffle session, we first need to obtain the previously shuffled track's track ID. 
We can do this by grabbing the last item in the previous shuffle track ID's array. Then we need to look up that track's index in the track's array. So here I use map to transform our array of tracks into an array of track IDs, and I ask it for the first matching index for our previous track's ID. If there's no match, there is not much we can do, so we can just return nil, and when we ask for the previous track, playback will just halt. Otherwise, we can just return the track found at the same index as the previous track. Of course, right now, nothing ever manages adding and removing IDs to the previous shuffle track IDs array, so we'll need to modify the move to previous track and move to next track action methods to do so. In move to previous track, we're going to want to remove the last ID in the previous shuffle track IDs array so that it gradually becomes smaller as we press the previous track button. And in move to next track, we're going to want to add the current track ID to the previous shuffle track IDs array so that as the track ends, IDs start populating the previous shuffle track IDs array, and then the previous track button will be able to do the correct thing. The one missing piece of the puzzle right now is the next track method. First, we're going to want to get a list of tracks whose IDs are not already present in the previous shuffle track IDs array. Then we want to randomly pick one of those tracks and return it as the next track. I didn't actually know how to generate a random number in Swift, so I had to go look it up here. Now, if we bring up Caesura to test this out, I can enable shuffle and mash on the previous and next track buttons and observe that shuffling does actually seem to work. There are still some edge cases to handle, namely how shuffle should behave in combination with repeat modes. For example, if shuffle and repeat all are both enabled, I want all tracks to play once in a random order before playing through the whole collection again in a different random order. Right now our shuffle implementation can't handle that. I went on a 5 minute tear here just writing a bunch of garbage that didn't really make any sense just to undo everything, so I'm just going to skip forward to the changes that actually matter. So if shuffle and repeat all are both enabled and we're about to skip to the next track, we need to check if there are any unplayed tracks left in this shuffle session. If none are left, we need to empty out the previous shuffle track IDs array so the tracks become available for shuffling again. We've also got to handle the repeat one mode correctly. Fundamentally, repeat one means that I just repeat the currently playing track over and over again, and it should have priority over all shuffle logic. So here I'm just moving the repeat one check earlier in the previous track and next track methods so that it has priority over all of the shuffle logic.
Also here, I noticed a bug in move to previous track where I would remove the last ID in the previous shuffle track IDs array before computing the previous track, which meant that a track was always being skipped accidentally when pressing the previous track button. Kudos if you caught it in the last demo. So let's end it with a little test. And you'll notice the app crashes if we press previous too much. So what's going on? Well, it seems that the issue is in the move to previous track method. When we remove the last ID from the previous shuffle track IDs array, this operation crashes if the array is empty. So here I'm just adding an additional if statement that only runs that instruction if the array isn't empty. Also, since repeat one logic overrides all shuffle logic, we don't actually need to do anything that manages the IDs in the previous shuffle track IDs array. So we can just add a condition to the if shuffle enabled statement in both the move to previous track and move to next track methods to check that the repeat mode isn't repeat one. Now that the crashes should be fixed, we can test that everything works. So here's a weird scenario. What happens if a user deletes a track that we previously played in a shuffle session? Currently, that scenario isn't handled in any special way, so pressing previous track will work until we hit the non-existing ID, and then playback will just end abruptly because we can't find the track that corresponds to that ID. I'm in the update tracks method here, which is called whenever a library or playlist change occurs that can impact playback, and I'm tacking on some code that filters the array of accumulated track IDs to only contain the ones that are still present in the updated collection. That way, pressing previous track repeatedly will simply skip over any tracks that have been deleted. The current shuffle implementation is using the track ID, which is fine for shuffling the library or shuffling ordered playlists holding at most one copy of each track. However, ordered playlists do allow multiples of the same track to be in the playlist, meaning that if we wanted to respect those multiples in our shuffle implementation, we would need to use the playlist association ID rather than the track ID if the currently playing collection is an ordered playlist. So here we've created a contextual ID helper method that will return the correct ID field based on whatever the currently playing collection is. Once we've changed all the places in the code that we use the raw track ID to use this method, one consistent implementation will work seamlessly in both scenarios. Now it's time for a final test. And here you can see that as we shuffle through the playlist, it's respecting that we have three distinct instances of exit 133 and playing each one individually, whereas prior to these changes, it would have only honored one. With this episode, the Caesura Guided Tour has caught up to Caesura 2021.11.19, which is the latest release of Caesura at time of recording. From now on, episodes should track more closely with development of Caesura. In practice, this means episode releases may become more irregular than the weekly pace, minus monthly swan song episodes that I've been maintaining thus far. That said, I had been purposefully slowing down Caesura development throughout December to specifically avoid being in a situation where I kept growing the video backlog. Hopefully Caesura development can return to a more reasonable pace from here on out. 
The next episode will focus on moving to coordinators. So I'll see you then.